What up, virtual GBO? I'm AJ and I'm gonna make some guac. As you can see, I've got some avocados here, ready to go, already pre-halved. I just gotta scoop them out and put them in the bowl. And what other ingredients do we have? Diced red onion. This was about half, half of a red onion. Aroma tomato diced as well. And then we've got eight avocados. Small to medium size, not the jumbos. Other ingredients, some cilantro. You'll get to watch me dice that in a minute. Over here, getting all nice and roasted, are a few jalapenos and an enormous clove of garlic. So I'll dice those up as well. We've got a nice lime. Probably gonna use half of this lime. Squeeze it all nice and good. Here we go. I'm gonna get to scooping. And I'm scooping the avocados. All righty. Got them all scooped out of their shells. Would you look at it? So, oh baby. Next step is to mash them up just a little bit. A little pre-mash before we add in all the other ingredients. So I'll do that now. Oh man, oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside for now. We've got a big old bunch of cilantro. And holy crap, this is one of the secret ingredients which just kind of gives the guac a nice aroma. It's just one of the more complex ingredients sets off a good batch of guac. I mean, personally, I can tell if guacamole doesn't have cilantro. It's just not the same. But since it has such an effect on a good batch of guac, it does come with a catch. It does take a skilled hand with the knife to get that cilantro nice and super fine. So if someone doesn't take a bite out of their guac and get a huge leaf, and then it just kind of messes up that whole bite. So first I'm gonna cut off maybe an inch or two of this, the roots here. Set that to the side. And then what I like to do is just twist and pull it apart. Oh my God, it's so strong. And then kind of fold it over a little bit. Maybe roll and try to tuck as many little leaves under as many stems and whatnot as possible. So that way when I'm chopping, there isn't just a bunch of cilantro all frayed out so I can get some nice clean chops. And this knife, sharp. Oh man, so safety first. Notice I. Didn't really feel like talking while I was trying to do that because I don't want to slice off any of my fingertips. And speaking of fingertips, it's really important to employ that claw method when you're grabbing onto the cilantro or the onions or the tomatoes or the jalapenos like you'll see in, in a few minutes. Grab that cilantro and really kind of claw it up. Don't just put your nice little supple fingertips down flat like that. That's how blood happens. Really claw it, press down, get some good pressure in there, and then let the knife glide back and forth. Once you get those initial cuts down, then you kind of shape it into a little pile here like so. Let me get to do this fun part. Like I said before, we gotta do our best to finely chop this cilantro. All those leaves and stems and whatnot. Small as possible. Uh, you know, like something up here. So that way whenever someone's about to take a bite, they get little tiny bits of cilantro instead of big huge bits because those big leaves will just overpower all the, the other ingredients. And the same thing goes for the onions and the tomatoes and the avocado and the, all, everything. The finer the chop sizes are and the smaller the pieces, the better blend you'll get with all your ingredients. Oh my God, such a sharp knife. Here. As you can tell, this part's pretty fun. Okay, so, got a nice pile of dark green powder. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that into my bowl of avocado mash. Another little side piece of wisdom. Notice how I'm holding it upside down. If I were to slide my ingredients off the cutting board with the 
blade side down, it would make that blade super dull, super quick. No bueno when it comes to knife health. Now we're gonna take my nice roasted jalapenos and roasted garlic. I'm gonna dice that up real quick and toss that in with the onions and the tomatoes. And the last touches will be the lime juice and the salt. Here we go. Time for another chopping montage. Chopping montage, chop, chopping montage. Don't know what that's gonna look like. Don't know what that's gonna smell look like. Don't know what that's gonna montage like. But it should be pretty fun. Chopping montage. The only downside of roasting your garlic is it gets it all mushy and a little bit harder to chop. But it's oh so fragrant and tasty. Now it's time to dice the jalapenos. The biggest key for the jalapenos and the biggest like differential, I guess you would call it, is the seeds. The seeds are what give the jalapenos their spice. In terms of the overall spice of the guac, you have to ask yourself, how spicy do I want my guac? Really spicy, then lots of seeds. If not, nice and mild, do your best to get those little seeds out of there. Personally, I'm all about balance. So I'm gonna aim for like about a third of the total seeds in this batch. Chop in montage, chop, chop in montage. Yeah, so I ended up taking out a bit more than third of the seeds. I took out close to like five sixths of the seeds, but that's okay. Now that I've got the hollies in like long bits, I'm gonna Dice them up real small again, just like everything else. Chop, 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 chop in montage. Okay, that's Tina. Hi. Jalapenos are nice and diced up real small. Real small. Might as well toss it all into the avocado mash. Jalapenos and garlic. In with the onions. Onion. Tomatoes. That smells real good. And now we just get to mashing, stirring it up, baby. One of the avocados wasn't exactly right. Oh well. Yeah, well, someone's gonna get a real good chunk of avocado when they bite into their guac. Should be fun. So if you can kind of tell from some of this with the consistency, pretty thick, pretty chunky. It gets real chunky when your ratio of diced onions to avocado is a little bit more on the onion heavy side. But I haven't squeezed in the lime juice yet. So I'll do that now and I just ate straight up jalapeno seeds. Hey oh Okay. Lime. In you go. Squeeze it once, stir it up, squeeze it again, stir it up some more. And go for one last squeeze, get it all in there. And if someone ever tells you that your guac is nice and creamy, it's because you put in a good amount of lime juice. Last, but definitely not least, salt. When any recipe or anything says salt to taste, that is 100% a guideline, not a rule. There are no rules, except that you need salt in your guac. So, whatever floats your boat. For me, I have a couple secret, secret seasonings to accompany my salt. I go with paprika. Whenever it's available, I'll put a little bit of paprika into my guac, just a little. Oh man, that just sets it off. I'm all about being resourceful in the kitchen. So we got a little bit of Old Bay, and that'll give that a little nice little kick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Got our chips here. The first moment of truth. Taste test time. It might be one of the best batches I've ever made. I mean, I say that every time, but this one's pretty good. 
I feel like any any jalapenos or jalapeno seeds instantly makes your guac spicy. I tried to take out most of the seeds, and I think that was the right choice. All right. The reviews are in. It's good. A little spicy up front and a little kick at the end. I feel like the flavors are all there. Some nice avocados, diced onions. I don't know what the heck I'm pointing at. Maybe I'll have some graphics on this. Maybe they should be here. Okay, we'll try to do this this way. Avocados, onions, tomatoes, uh, cilantro, roasted jalapenos, roasted jalapenos, uh, roasted garlic. Uh, I'm not used to this. Lime juice. Salt, paprika, seasonings, salt, paprika, seasonings down here. There you have it all together. Um, this is, I can, I can, maybe I can do it. Uh, maybe I'll use it. Oh. All those ingredients. I feel like that's it. That's, that's the guac. Peace.